Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Joseph Gordon-Levitt goes for a walk, and not the after-dinner kind, in The Walk, as Philippe Petit, the Frenchman who, in 1974, performed a high-wire walk between the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. It was an act so legendary and audacious that you would think that you would have heard about it somewhere before. That someone must have made a documentary about it or something. And you'd be right. The gripping Man on Wire, which is currently streaming on Netflix, won the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature of 2008. I highly recommend seeking that film out for the full, true story of this adventure told by the people who were there and using photos and some video of the real events. It's an incredibly moving portrait of a man who was larger than life, who accomplished something magnificent. Which leads us to The Walk. Do we really need it? Put another way, what does The Walk have? What could it possibly do better than the documentary Man on Wire? Well, there it is. It's got one thing over Man on Wire, and one thing only. It's got the ability to use special effects and the spectacle of IMAX 3D to recreate the actual walk itself, which makes the title truly meaningful. Man on Wire tells the story, puts it in context, gives the event significance, poetry, meaning, but if you go see The Walk, that's truly what you're going for. And it's the last 30 minutes of the film, The Walk, which makes the overall experience worth the ticket price. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. If you are of a certain age, you can remember a time when the word IMAX was applied to screens that you'd find at the museum rather than the cineplex. The films shown on these screens were about 45 minutes to an hour long, usually documentaries with lots of narration showing you vast underwater worlds or close-up looks at the planets blown up to mammoth size to inspire awe with their visuals. In short, they weren't dramatic narrative films. They didn't carry the burden of telling a story. They were just there to give you something amazing to look at in a form that you hadn't seen before. The Walk feels like one of those early IMAX films blown up to feature length with a lot of filler. It does not have well-rounded characters or tell a story with much depth. Perhaps in line with the subject of a high-wire walker, this movie feels lighter than air. The dubious choice to have the whole film narrated to death by Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Petit, standing on a digitally created perch at the top of the Statue of Liberty, underscores just how much it breaks one of film's biggest laws. Show us, don't tell us. The film constantly interrupts its own narrative to cut back to Levitt, hanging out on Lady Liberty's torch, trying to keep the narrative on track. Or sometimes it doesn't even interrupt the action, it just gives us meaningless voiceover to tell us how he was feeling or what it all meant. I make my way to the top and I find myself standing on an island floating in midair on the edge of the void. Of course, I automatically look across to the opposite tower, but then I have to dare to look down. And the problem with this is, we've already got a great movie where Philip Petit tells his own story, the aforementioned Man on Wire, and you simply cannot beat the real guy. The real Petit is an irrepressible, egocentric, and brilliant madman. And one could listen to him spout his poetry all day. I knew he was a nut, or a con man, or something. As a child, I loved to climb. Nobody could stop me. If you want, it's impossible, that's sure. So let's start working. Why did you do this? Police took a humorless view of the act. Why did Where you do it? You? There is no why. Now I'm going to perform. This is probably the end of my life to step on that wire. Death is very close. Figured I was watching something that somebody else would never see again in the world. Thought it was once in a lifetime. Life should be lived on the edge. See every day as a true challenge, and then you live your life on the tightrope. As game as Joseph Gordon-Levitt is, he just can't match the original. And this is a movie. He shouldn't even need to try. 
but it just keeps popping up again to break the fourth wall, both on and off camera. The first hour of this film just kind of floats there, flitting between introducing the accomplices and summarizing Petit's evolution towards becoming a wire walker and his arrival in New York. It all feels just kind of insubstantial, especially if you know how some of the true aspects of the story were ignored, changed, or sanitized for mass consumption. Like instances where the notoriously overconfident Petit expresses doubt all of a sudden the night before, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy the love story in the movie either, or become well acquainted with any of the supporting characters who are dispensed with, including his love interest, pretty quickly after the walk itself is over. But then there's that walk. As soon as the heist itself begins, or as they refer to it in the movie, the coup, all of a sudden, boom, you got yourself a movie! Well, not a movie per se, but definitely the sort of thing you'd have paid extra to see at the IMAX screen at the Air and Space Museum, circa 1995. A visual spectacle! A feast for the senses that takes you somewhere that you'd never be able to go otherwise. Petit walks. He sits. He salutes his audience. He even lays down at one point. All on a single wire, strung between the tallest buildings in the world at that time. A human being impossibly suspended in the sky. And it is beautiful, and nerve-wracking, and awe-inspiring, and it provides, at about one-third of the movie's running time, a real reason to see this film. But only in IMAX 3D. Uh, side note, when I bought my ticket to the walk, the person at the box office said, uh, and it's in 3D, is that okay? I mean, I know she probably had to, as there's a certain segment of the population, <clears throat> old people, that don't check these things out before they leave the house, and then they get irritated and return their tickets when they realize they'll have to wear glasses. But I resisted the urge to say, is it okay? Is it okay? It's required! 3D me, baby! In fact, IMAX 3D me, let's just keep the line moving! There are some films that I'd recommend seeing in a premium format if you can, but I also always say that they're still worthwhile seeing in normal old 2D. But when it comes to The Walk, either IMAX 3D it or just stay home and watch Man on Wire on Netflix streaming. In fact, you should watch Man on Wire whether you see The Walk or not. So in short, I give The Walk a mild recommendation with a medium bag of popcorn. If you want to just go for the visual spectacle and thrills of the last 30 minutes, you will definitely get your money's worth in IMAX 3D. You just wouldn't want to waste your time with 2D or even watch at home on Blu-ray. And God help you if you try to watch something like this on your phone or on a plane. Don't even bother. That does it for Movies That Pop. Stay tuned for more reviews of the latest movies. They're coming right at you. Don't forget to leave any comments you like below and click the thumbs up to indicate you like what you saw. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss a review. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and... Whoa. Whoa. I almost lost my... Ah!